two extra kilos of weight with a with a time trial bike. Um, so I think, well, I'm I'm sure that those guys will all be doing bike changes at the bottom of the Planche de Belfi. Welcome to this Never Stop Cycling Virtual Recon, a series in which riders recon a crucial segment of one of their upcoming races, and they do it just for the comfort of their living room, at home, on their tax trainer. And my name is Rob Pau, and I'm your host, and I'm thrilled to be joined by the guy on the other side of the screen. It is Sam Hewley of Middleton Scott, and he's going to give us an insight about the final climb of the time trial of stage 20 of this year's Tour de France, the climb up to La Planche de Belleville. And we know this is definitely not the way he was planning on riding it up this year. So extremely grateful that he's still here to talk us through it. Welcome, Sam. How are you going? Hey, mate. How are you? Just started the climb now. It's already, it's already getting pretty tough, actually, especially with a broken arm and a broken rib. A... So, <laughs> yeah, like you say, it would have been would have been nice to be actually racing up this climb in the Tour de France in a couple of days' time. But yeah. here I am on the tax trainer, uh, arm and cast, and I'm away back from injury. Yeah, because you crashed out, unfortunately, on, a, on stage 10 of the Tour. We, we, we just got to dive into it a little bit more, but first left the viewers at home give an idea about uh, what they can expect of this virtual recon and about La Planche de As I said, it is going to be in that individual time trial on the penultimate stage of this year's Tour de France. The last chance for the riders to shake up the GC standings and they're going to do it, make a quick stop in this Vaux region before they reach Paris. So if we zoom in on that climb, and we can see on that stage of the 36.2 kilometer time trial up to La Planche de Belleville, it has become a staple climb in the tour over the last couple of years. It first featured in 2012 when Chris Froome won the stage. And now it is back at the back end of the tour as an individual time trial, 5.9 kilometers long at an 8.5% average gradient with a steeper section of 20% near the top. And as the Garmin Edge computer on your screen shows with the Climb Pro feature on, the dark colors indicate that steep early and middle section of the climb and then a little bit of a relief before it kicks up to that incredibly steep finish. I must say, I think it's a really brave uh, brave first ride back for you, uh, for you, Sam. Yeah, look, I mean, uh, it's been, we were just speaking before we went on air that it's been about 10 days now since I crashed or coming up 10 days and um, yeah, I'm already breathless actually. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, yeah, yeah, I mean, there's been some, obviously, I needed a few days to get over get over the disappointment of missing missing the rest of the Tour de France, and um, the problem I've got, the, the, the major complication at the moment, I suppose, for me is my ribs, I've uh, broken a couple of ribs, so, but it was about time, about time I got back on the bike and um, at least started turning the pedals a little bit, so what better way to start than to join you guys here and get on the tax trainer and... I mean, it would have been nice if you guys let me do a flat <laughs> stage, but hey, here we are. Planche de Belfi. We should have just done the Champs Elysees for you to get to a recon off the Champs Elysees for one lap, maybe. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, but it looks like a nice climb. It's pretty, pretty tough. I'm just looking here now at the screen. 10% hasn't dropped much below that since I started, so. Um, not excited about that twenty percent that you've got. You just told us about. That's, that's only going to be at the end. You'll be fine. For that last bit, and then we'll, I'll just cheer you on a bit to, <laughs> to get you over that finish line there. So, so you haven't done this climb before? Perfect. No, never. No. Um, but like you say, it's been a bit of a staple climb in the Tour de France the uh, the last couple of years. And last year was a really exciting stage up there with uh, finishing on the dirt. Um, and yeah, this year is going to be awesome. Been having, uh, having it been a time trial, uh, it's going to, I mean, so, so, still so much to play for, especially for the um, third place on GC. So it's going to be a very, very exciting way to finish the Tour de France. So, so how good it were you when you had to drop out at that moment where you still guys were going so strong with that crash? Oh yeah, absolutely devastated. Obviously, um, my first Tour de France. Uh, Team was going. We were sort of riding on a high for sure because we'd we'd spent four days in the yellow jersey, and um, yeah, we I mean we lost it the day before the rest day, but at that point we still had so much uh, momentum in the team, and 
so much uh, morale and everything. And I was really looking forward to hopefully contributing more to a, either a stage actually for the team or for, for Adam's GC. Um, but yeah, I mean, like I say, first Tour de France and been a long time coming. I've always, always wanted to be there. Um, would have loved to have ridden into Paris. Uh, but unfortunately, I'll be watching on TV. So, yeah, still still getting over the disappointment, to be honest. Uh, probably will take a little while to do that. But uh, hopefully I'll be back again in the, in the next year or two. And I'm starting to feel really cruel because while you were talking, <laughs> I can see that you're pushing up like a 17% part of the climb uh, so far up the plunge. I'll fear for your first ride back. Uh, is it the first time that you're actually doing a recon on the trainer as well? Uh, it is, yeah, it is. Um, obviously, when we were we were in the in the lockdown for, for three or four months there earlier in the year, we were doing a lot of stuff on the home trainer. Um, but I, I, I didn't actually delve too much into the world of the of the tax the tax videos. But yeah, so this is the first time I've done a done a recon on a home trainer, and I'll tell you what, it's actually going to be a very very handy tool going forward um, for races coming up. I reckon. Uh, I mean. Hopefully, I can make a comeback at some point throughout this season. Uh, not a not a not a long way to go in the season, and still a bit of recovery to do. But if I can maybe get back for who knows, maybe the Vuelta or something like that, then uh, might better do some recons on here. It's a very cool platform. Yeah, and, and if you then be able to do this type of recons, uh, is there a difference what you look out for now in a virtual recon than a regular recon, and what are the things that you that you look for in a recon to get familiar with the climb? Well, I think the beauty of having a um, having it here virtually is you can do it so many more times. I mean, if you if you do a recon of a climb or a recon of a stage, uh, typically on the road, you you only look at, look at it once. Um, the beauty of having this platform here on tax is that you, I could actually ride this if I was say if I was a um, Adam Yates or a, a GC guy, I could look at this climb, you know, ten, twenty, thirty times before the Tour de France actually started to get a really good idea of of the gradients and, uh, and you know, sections where you need to push a bit more and sections where you can maybe recover a little bit. Um, so the idea of, of having these virtual virtual recons is absolutely awesome. And, yeah, like, I'm looking at the screen now, obviously, and it's, you just have the ability to, to um, sort of recognise and take note of, of the sections a little bit more than you do if you've only got one chance at riding it on the road. Nice little flat section here. I went to that. <laughs> so, what are the things that you pick up on when when you're doing this recon? In terms of maybe even other stuff like road servers, or, or what are the things that you see? Uh, yeah, well, you can see the um, obviously, like just what I was saying, then the the sort of the the, the way the climbs formatted, whether it's uh, more, a more regular climb, or uh, whether it's got steep sections and then flat sections, and that that would actually that would absolutely define the way you would race up a climb, um, and yeah, you can see that you can see the road surfaces, you can see the width of the road, which would be really handy for recons and um, perhaps sprint stages or uh, stages where there might be uh, crosswinds and and things like that. You can you can see the width of the road, so you can you can get a really good idea of, about when you need to be in position, um, and you can you can also identify areas of the course where you can move up, you know, you might see, hey, look, we turn left here and the wide road is for 5K. So we have time to make make a move there and move into good position. And then and then we take a right and the road's super narrow where you need to be in the front. So you get all those sorts of things from uh, from doing these recons. And, and how would it go like in a time trial like this? Because the first is sort of like a 30 kilometer run into the bottom of the climb before, before the climb starts. How do you sort of... Um, yeah, plan plan your ride. Then is it to threshold at some point percentages on that flat part, and would that change when going up the climb? Yeah, you'd have to really think about how the, how you rode it. Um, obviously, you, the the climb is where where the big chunks of time are going to be taken for those guys. So you'd be you'd be without without giving away too much time on the on the um, on the thirty k prior to it. You'd definitely be wanting to save save the majority of your energy for the climb 
uh, and then really and then really pushing on on the climb to try to uh, uh, make those time gaps there. Also, like on a stage like this one, you'd have to be looking into whether you do a bike change or not. You have uh, 30k on the flat or rolling roads where certainly a time trial bike is going to be much quicker than a road bike, but then uh, the time trial bike is going to be so much slower on the climb. So you need to, uh, yeah, you'd have to look into those sort of aspects. Do you do a bike change or do you back the time trial bike over the road bikes for the whole course? But I'd be suspecting there'd be a lot of bike changes happening. Yeah, is that your first indication that you would definitely go for a bike change with these gradients and this length of the climb? Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, I think. Okay. I think almost everybody will be doing a bike change after seeing, uh, you know, that's the first. I've only seen the first two k, and already you can see the gradients of this climb, and uh, like you say, it gets steeper towards the top. So, when you're talking about a time trial bike over a road bike, you, you be, could be talking about two extra kilos of weight with a with a time trial bike. Um, so I think, well, I'm, I'm sure that those guys will all be doing bike changes at the bottom of the Planche de Belfi. So what would you reckon would the time loss be if you would still decide to go for the time trial bike? What, what, what are we talking about then? Are we talking about minutes or? Yeah, I reckon. I think, I mean, uh, what is this kind of seven, seven K or six and a half, seven K climb? So those guys are probably looking at doing it in 30 minutes, let's say, you know, around 30 minutes. I think if you were to try to time your bike, you'd, you'd probably be giving away a good minute, uh, if not more, I think, definitely. But then the same goes on the on the, the flat run-in before the climb. If you were to ride a road bike, you'd give away also in a minute or so. So that's why I think the bike change is going to be so crucial and, uh, and so widely used. Yeah, especially because I think if you're looking at now another gradient picking up again, I think it's going to 14.5% or something. Um, how would it make a difference for if you would be like a good climber versus just a good time trialist? Who's got the advantage in a time trial like this? Um, I think you'll see a mix um, in the results sheet. You'll, you'll, uh, I think specialist time trial riders could still do a good result here because they have the ability to take some time um, from those from those climbers on the flatter the flatter running before the climb, uh, but I think the time that you know let's say if we use someone like Stefan Kung as an example, um, a really strong time trial specialist, he he could potentially take 40 seconds um, 40 seconds to a minute out of some of the climbers on that on that 30k before the climb, but he would lose more than that just in this 7k. So. It's definitely going to be a TT that's going to be won by um, by a climber. Uh, and, I mean, when you're talking about those top GC guys, the Rogliches, the Pogacars, those guys are actually unbelievable time trial riders anyway. They, they can win flat time trials. So uh, it's certainly going to be one of those guys that wins this time trial. And talk about like an exciting battle to watch. Have, have you been able to watch a bit yourself while being on the couch? You were just too devastated to watch or... Mate, I've watched every stage from start to finish, basically. Um, a lot of people say, yeah. oh, how the hell do you do that? You know, doesn't it make you sad? But I'm sort of the opposite. Um, uh, at the end of the day, the Tour de France is, con is continuing with, without me. Uh, that's just what happens. And I still really enjoy watching the Tour de France. I always have. Um, I enjoy watching my teammates. Uh, I'm really excited to see how Adam's going to go uh, in these last couple of days. And, and to be honest... As gutted as I was and, and as devastated as I was to be out of the race, I wasn't ready to detach myself from the race. So I've really enjoyed watching it, um, really enjoyed uh, talking about it with different people and, uh, you know, like yourself and other podcasts and things like that. So, yeah, I wasn't ready to, to detach myself from the tour. So I have been watching basically every single stage. And in the process, making it to the top of the charts of the New Zealand uh what is it? Podcast list as well, above uh, Lance Armstrong, beating Lance. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're in front of Lance. We've I was throwing the bait out to Lance to try and get a bit of a reaction, but no, nothing at the moment. So, um, but no, I've been really enjoying doing that podcast. We started it, me and George Bennett and Dan Jones. We started in the lockdown, um, had nothing else to do, so we sort of just started it as something to fill in the day, really. Um, 
but now I've been really enjoying doing it. It's gaining some momentum now, and I guess it's a little bit of a, you know, uh, uncut version of cyclists talking about bike riding and and all sorts of other things. So people seem to be enjoying that. So for the people watching, it is the social distance podcast, right? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, the social distance podcast. Find us on uh, where you get all good podcasts, and there's also we're also on YouTube, so you can watch us. Uh, we do a video version of it as well. So yeah, and now obviously you're riding up these slopes of uh, of nine percent right now. Um, normally, when you would be riding out a road and not virtual, you might have an indication like that on your on your Garmin. Are, are you looking at that with the Climb Pro future? Or yeah, I always use um, in any race. I always upload the GPX file, so the uh, the whole stage onto my Garmin, onto my Garmin Edge, and I um, and that has a great feature of. Of showing the gradients and the lengths of the climbs uh, is something that I find very, very helpful actually. Because uh, not being a climber myself, uh, sometimes it's, it's nice to know how far how far to go on the climb and also what the gradients are looking like coming up, so that I can monitor my effort a little bit. Um, you know, if I'm trying to stay with the bunch, but the, the pressure's on, I can I can see what's coming coming up over the next few k and um, you know, I can say to myself, look, just get over this last, or get over this, this steep little bit here because after that it flattens off for 500 metres or a K and, uh, and then you're only 2K from the top. So all these little things like that. And um, I find that feature very, very handy. So what are the other things that you have on your screen then when you have that climb feature on? What, what else are you looking at? The power, heart rate, cadence? What are those things that you are looking at? Yeah, I try to simplify it down. Uh, when, when I'm racing, like when I'm training, I have a lot of different things on there. I have... The power, the heart rate, um, you know, obviously distance and time. Um, when I'm racing, I usually just have it always on the map, on the map screen. Uh, so I keep keep the map feature up so I can see see what's coming up, and I just have the power and the power and the distance um, below the map. Uh, so that's all I really need to know when I'm racing. And then, obviously, the automatic feature of the climbs when I'm when we hit a climb that the uh, the screen does its thing, does its own. Uh, own business and flick, flicks to that to that feature and uh, shows me how long to go on the climb so basically all I'm using is the map the climb feature and and power and distance is, is the fact that you're using the map also maybe with your role in the team maybe more of a of a, of a domestic role and guiding the other guys for the belt on to know what's coming up etc or would someone like Adam have the same things on I think most of the guys use it um, I mean it's just such an easy such an easy feature to use and uh, and so beneficial. But yeah, um, yeah, you are right. When when you're in my role as a domestique and you you need to uh, make sure the guys like Adam and stuff are in put in the right place and in important important sections, you can see that coming up on the map. Uh, yeah, you can see. Look, five k. We take a right hand turn. Uh, it's really windy today. The wind's in front of us. Uh, it's a headwind. But yeah, in 5K, we turn your right. That's going to mean the wind's going to be coming from our side. So we need to be in a, in a good position there in case it goes in the in the gutter, as they say, in the crosswinds. Um, so yeah, really, really important, really handy feature. And, and like I say, it's so so simple to use um, and so beneficial. So I think all of the guys use it. So, so you, I think you're just going through like a section that's been really tough with a lot of 12 and 13 um, percent. <clears throat> When, how, what are the thoughts at the moment from the riders, from GC riders, when they're doing that time trial by this stage of that climb in the time trial? Uh, well, yeah, well, at this point, I mean, you're halfway up the climb. Um, so, you know, the, the, those guys will be 15 minutes into the climb, but they'll be looking at sort of being already 40 minutes into the race, into the time trial as a whole. Uh, so at, at this point, you know, they've kind of, you're hoping that you've, you've judged your effort well. Um, because right about now is where you start to feel like you are on the absolute limit, basically. Um, and this would be the section where you'd be, I see here, it's just flattened off a bit to six and a half, seven percent, which would be an opportunity for the guys to probably have a little bit of a breather. Um, you obviously try to maintain your speed a little bit, but it's a, it's a period where you, could, where you could take a little bit of a breather, maybe knock 20, 30 watts off of what you're doing um, in preparation for what's to come. But yeah, at this point, it's uh, this is where you would know if you've stuffed up your, your effort because 
uh, if you start to drop off the watts now and you can't get them back, um, there's still a long way to go in the sense of, of uh, I mean, it's, to, it's less than 3K, but you're talking about 15 minutes, so you can still lose 30, 40 seconds simply simply because you've misjudged your effort. And, uh, and on the other hand, if you've, if you've timed it well, this will be the time where you start going a little bit faster even and, uh, and taking time out of those guys. So what's the percentage of the peloton that will still be racing this time trial? And how? what is the percentage that is just happy to get through it, happy to get to Paris and get it over with? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, often in time trials, you get, in grand tours, I should say, you do get guys looking for a, a, a easy day or a day off. Uh, and it depends, you know, if, if you're... If you're in a team where you're where you're riding for a GC leader, you would you would use the time trial as an easier day to try to recover, so that you can go back to work the following day. Um, obviously, this TT there's there's nothing to save yourself for because uh, the next day is Paris. Um, but then on the other hand, it's a TT that suits really only a handful of people. So I think you'd be looking at probably most guys in the top. 50 or 60 um, will probably race, you know, have a real crack at trying to get a result on this stage. Um, the guys behind that, they realistically understand that they can't get a result on this time trial. But uh, the other thing you've got to remember is there's a time cut. Uh, and if you go too easy, if you ride too easy on a climb like this against the guys like Roglic and those people, you lose a lot of time. You could You could lose... 10 minutes um, just up the climb itself. And then and that's not even mentioning the time that you lose before the climb. So there is a time cut that time cut you have to make. So I think most guys will still have to push pretty hard on a TT like this. Is there, has there been one stage this Tour de France that happened after you crashed out that you were absolutely gutted to miss? Was there one particular stage that you were looking forward to? Or was it just a general thing of in because it was your Tour de France um, debut? Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, the whole thing. I'm just yeah, absolutely gutted to miss to miss the whole thing. Um, I guess ultimately the stage into Paris on Sunday. That might be the like I said earlier. I was, I've been watching all the stages, but I don't know if I'll watch that one. Um, that's that's the one stage that would have been really special. You know, it's always nice and a special feeling to finish any Grand Tour. Um, and having been my first Tour de France, it would have been. Pretty cool day, right? To, to, to ride on the Champs Elysees. So that's a stage that I'm going to be definitely hurting on missing. Um, but yeah, just in general, the whole race, uh, I've, I've really missed being there. At least one of the things is that you can show off now to your teammates that you've already uh, done La Planche Belfi before they did. Not sure if you're going to make the time cut on this one, <laughs> but <laughs> at least you've read it before they did. No, I reckon I'm. I reckon I've missed the time card, that's for sure. <laughs> These guys have taken me 40 minutes so far to do just the uh, first 4.5k of the climb. and I mean, Roglic would have done 30k on the flat before that <laughs> and probably still be at the same time as me right now. So <laughs> I'll definitely miss the time cut, but I'll be able to, I will be able to give them some intel, actually. Um, you know, this, having, having done this recon now, it's been, it's been actually awesome to, to, to see how... how um, how much you can actually see from from your computer and from, like you say, the comfort of your lounge. So I'll uh, be able to give the give the guys a bit of a heads up about what's to come. What would you be telling them after doing this? Uh, I'd be telling them that it's a very very steep climb, and that to um, you need to be saving some energy before it. Uh, you don't want to be coming to the bottom of this climb already on the limit. Um, be very important to to even give away a couple of seconds on that flat part at the, for the first 30k and and make sure you come into the bottom of the climb knowing that you can go from the bottom to the top um, at the same speed and you know it is it is quite a regular climb I've noticed I mean it's it's super steep uh, and there have been a couple of flatter sections but in general it's quite it's quite a regular climb so would be would be important to um, Monitor your effort, you know, whatever your wattage, whatever your wattage may be that you think you can ride for 30 minutes up here just to not deviate away from that too much.
And you already mentioned just now that uh, the climb is pretty regular, but now there's a bit of a section that is going to flat out a little bit towards that final kick. So it would come as a as a welcome relief and well-deserved bit uh, for, for you. Yeah, I'm looking forward to I'm enjoying it right now. But this is this is certainly a point in the race where you'd be... Um, I mean, it's important to maintain the speed because when you're... You know, right now here, look, I'm... I'm one and a half k from the top of the climb, and it's just over five percent. Uh, so you you can actually go quite fast here. Uh, you know the guys will be going, you know, over thirty k an hour, thirty five k an hour here. Uh, so you want to you, you don't want to give away too much speed. It's even flattening off more now, three percent. So yeah, the guys will be motoring here, but you need to save. You know, you're you're already completely on the limit, completely on the limit here, and uh, you know you've got this super super steep final section um so you need to save a little bit you know you might have 0.1 percent left that you can save for that for that section um so you will be taking a bit of a breather here a little bit of respite but also remembering that you, you need to try to keep the speed up as well so that might mean you accelerate into the into the flatter section so that you have the speed and then you back off for a little bit here um you sort of flat to down a little bit downhill dead flat at the moment uh just get to that top speed, try to hold it uh, as efficiently as possible before the for the last kick. And what would be the difference in power that you would push out on a climb and then on a flatter section like this? How much wattage difference is there, or how many percent? Uh, you do you definitely do less on the flat. Uh, it's it's, it's um, uh, I'm not going to say easier, <laughs> but it's 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 more. Uh, it's more applicable to hold higher watts on a, on, on steeper gradients, um, obviously because yeah you're trying to get a, a mass up a, up a, up a gradient. So it is it is it is in a sense from from a from a feeling point of view, it's it's easier to ride 400 watts on a six percent gradient than it is to ride 400 watts on a zero percent gradient. So um, on that flatter section back there that I've just ridden through, the guys will be doing less watts for sure. Um, and the the most important part, like I say, on that section is speed, is the speed. Um, so you try to get to top speed as quick as you can and then just try to be efficient with the watts, maybe knock it off 30, 20, 30 watts um, just to recover a little bit there. And and then, you know, this last part here, now I'm doing 9% and it's going to get steeper again. So then you'd be back up, back up to a... You know your, your your top wattage. And how does that influence? Like you mentioned, if you're going to do a bike change, um, what type of gearing would you be looking at if you jump on your roadie for this climb, knowing that you have those steep gradients, but also that section uh, where you really want to motor through it? Yeah, I think you'd probably be riding a. Um, yeah, I don't know. Guys, a lot of guys would probably would be quite different. I'd I'd probably ride a a 53 um, chain ring, front chain ring. Uh, normally I'd race always with a 54, but I'd put a, I'd put a 53 on because then you could ride the big chain ring on some of those flatter sections. Um, and then, yeah, the inside ring, I mean, at the 9, 10, 11%, you can get away with still riding like a 38, a 38 inside chain ring if you have a, have a, 30, a 30 cog on the back. Um, but I haven't seen this last part that you've been talking about yet. So let's see how steep that is, um, because that might mean you need to have a, a 36. I was say, wait for it, ring. wait for it. So you could be looking at a... <laughs> you yeah. don't have to do the, <laughs> yeah, yeah. the gravel section no, 30, that they did the last time, 30. so that helps. Yeah, that does help, yeah. Oh, wet corner <laughs> there, hopefully that. But let the boys know it's a bit of a wet corner. Uh, let's be careful there. <laughs> oh, here we go. Here we go. Oh no, I missed the gear change. Here we go. All right, what are we at? 11%. So yeah, I don't know. Guys might be looking at riding a, uh, a 36 inside chain ring, a 3630. Uh, I think the top guys will probably ride a 38 though, 3830. Um, and yeah, 53, 53 big chain ring. And what would the thoughts be approaching this final bit of that climb? Is it is it just is this just a mental thing to get over that bump, next to being physical? 
Yeah. Yeah, at this point, um, uh, for me uh, and, and a lot of guys in the race, I've probably been enjoying this section and going, look, man, effectively I'm 500 metres away from finishing the Tour de France. For the guys racing, uh, there's no thinking. There's nothing to think about. There's no tactics. It's basically get out of the seat and go as hard as you possibly can from that bottom right-hand corner that we just went through. Uh, to the finish line, yeah. There's no, no saving energy anymore. This is the final push. So, yeah, those guys will just be going as hard as they possibly can with whatever they've got left. And then whatever they've got left for that final bit of there, it finally is coming inside that twenty and a half percent. It even says on the screen. Oh, this is steep. Yeah, I think. Yeah, it'd be really interesting going back to that gear and what what those top guys use. It's, it's sort of hard for me to relate. I don't know how fast they go in these twenty percenters. I know that I don't go super fast, but you know, maybe a thirty six inside chain ring would be would be the would be the chain ring of choice. And there it was, twenty and a half percent. So it's only going to get easier now. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's an, that's a that's a cruel finish to. Uh, well, it's a very tough time trial and what's been what's been a uh, very very tough tour to France so um yeah you ask me what stages I'd be look stages I've missed the most or whatever I don't know if I would have missed this one <laughs> you're happy to give away that time trial route for uh, to miss that to, to miss this one if you see those gradients <laughs> yeah exactly and now it's that final push over the top So we don't do the gravel, do we? No, 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 there's no gravel section. So having ridden all this, no. what's going to be your prediction for uh, for who's going to win that time trial? Oh man, that's I would have a week a week ago I would have said Roglic, um, but it's going to uh, actually I, I still I still think Roglic, but it's going to be very very close between him and Pog, Pogica. Um, you know, both of those guys are, are good time trial riders and two of the best climbers in the race. So I think the safe bet is to say Roglic, but uh, it certainly won't be won't be a gift the way Podjakar is going. Uh, I think Lopez, it's a great climb for Lopez. Uh, it's a great climb for Adam. But I think uh, they'll, they'll probably just lose a, bit, a little bit too much time on the 30K, on the 30K prior to the, to the climb. To win the stage right we saw it on your screen you've reached the top of la planche de belfier i reckon that's going to be your uh, your finish on the champs yeah, say for this year it's the, the, the performance was, wor- was worthy of it yeah. with the broken ribs and a broken wrist <laughs> <laughs> 51 minutes it's taken me to do how many k yeah well, something like that something. it's only going to get better from <laughs> it's only going to get better from yeah. here though all right yeah. well, t- well time to wrap it up no uh, sam thanks heaps for your time for your insights and obviously we wish you a, a speedy recovery and, thank you and mate I've, I've enjoyed i've enjoyed doing some recon on the on the tax trainer it's a great program i'm looking forward to using it more uh over the next little while while i'll be doing plenty of plenty of stuff on All the right. tax that's I'm awesome sure. that's great to hear and in the meantime, uh, just like we always say to our followers, make sure you never stop cycling. And I'm sure you'll do that and then uh, become uh, back stronger again than ever. So thanks heaps again, uh, Sam. And uh, That's it. do you guys go. Thank you all for watching. And like I said, never stop cycling. And we'll see you for the next one. Cheers, guys. Thanks, guys. See you later.